Hi, I'm uh, Paul Beckwith. I'm studying abrupt climate change at the uh, University of Ottawa. And uh, today I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, atmospheric uh, global circulation patterns, as well as uh, ocean currents. And, uh, you know, I'll talk briefly about um, what's happening with the uh, sea ice and also look at the uh, conditions in the Pacific to see, uh, you know, to see how the um, how the water temperature is and how, uh, you know, how, how we have an El Nino approaching, so I'll, I'll talk about that. So first of all, what I've got here is uh, I've got um, basically wind, uh, wind uh, currents at the uh, surface of the earth. So um, what we have here is um, Okay, so we've got Africa down here, we've got uh, South America here, North America. So what we can see is um, these are uh, wind currents occurring today. Um, and uh, we're in, this is in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, so we've got uh, counterclockwise rotation here. So this will be a low pressure area, higher pressure out. So as the air moves from the higher pressure to the lower pressure, it deflects to the right in the northern hemisphere because of the Coriolis force. So you get this pattern here. Um, over here you have a high pressure area. So as the air is leaving that, it deflects to the right. So you get this rotation. So you get, this is like a gear system where you get a lot of uh, um, wind coming through here and a lot of wind coming in here. And uh, we can actually see this uh, gear type motion um, over the Arctic. It's not fully developed, but um, we'll have a quick look at it here. So what we have is um, this is a top view looking down of the Arctic. Um, so we see this um, uh, we see this high pressure area here. Um, so we're getting this rotation um, and we have a low pressure area over here. Um, so we're getting um, the rotation here. So these are combining and uh, so these winds are combining here and they're pushing ice out of the Arctic Basin through the Fram Strait and also north of Svalbard here. Um, and uh, on the uh, Bering Strait side um, we've got these strong winds coming down the coast here so they're kind of pulling the air in this region down with them so the motion out is of the ice is out of the Bering Strait. So cold water and ice is coming out of the Arctic here. It's also coming out here um, uh, to uh, you know help in the uh, sea ice sea ice decline. Um, now the um, most people focus on the sea ice extent, which is any any region where you have 15 percent or more of ice and also on the ice area which is 100% ice and uh, of course as the ice because the ice is very thin it's pulled apart by the uh, uh, wind above it um, and uh, so the ice can actually the volume of the ice can still be decreasing which it is um, and the extent can actually um, be increased somewhat or at least uh, the increase in extent can compensate for some of the um, uh, volume loss, but the ice is, is thinning it the whole time, so it's it's uh, the volume is uh, following an exponential decline. Uh, that is the trend, so we'll see what happens. Um, now, if I go over and look at another part of the globe here, um, okay, so we've got these uh, this section here. Um, this is the Pacific Ocean, so we got the equator here, we got South America here, um, um, we've got North America up here, um, and we've got Australia over here. Um, so what we can see um, is we can see these uh, the, the uh, winds from the uh, southeast, the trade winds here coming up, we get north uh, northeast winds coming back here. Uh, because we're in the boreal summer in the northern hemisphere, um, we get the um, convergent zone here, you know, moving up. Um, but these and these winds are uh, quite weak um, compared to 
winds um, further to the pole because the temperature gradient and therefore the pressure gradient is greater as you move away from the equator. The temperature is pretty uniform here so the winds are not as strong. And then uh, over here uh, what we see is, uh, sorry I just lost my images, bring them back here. What we see over here is this is Antarctica. So this is the Antarctic Peninsula and the continent. So a couple interesting things is you can see winds moving. This is the high elevation areas. The highest elevation will be the blue areas. So the, the you have you have um, the air descending down the uh, side slopes. So these are the catabatic winds. Um, and uh, you see them descending from high altitudes to low altitudes and picking up speed as they near the coast. Um, in the southern hemisphere, the corridor is forced to flex things to the left. So these are actually all low pressure areas here. Um, so wind is moving, moving in is deflected to the left, which causes this uh, clockwise rotation around all these low pressure areas. So you can look at the, uh, where of course Antarctica is in its winter now. So you can look at areas, so areas where the winds are coming out from the coast, this will be increasing the, uh, it'll be pulling the uh, sea ice outward. So the sea ice extent will be larger in these regions. In these regions, you have warm water, warm water being pulled, will be pulled closer to the uh, coast. So the ice, there'll be the, the ice levels here, the sea ice levels here will be less because you've got warmer water coming, coming to the pole. Um, over here is another area where the ice extent will be large because you've got the cold air pushing it out. Um, so you can see those sort of things. You can also notice that the uh, current, the wind is stronger here because this is in their winter and there's a large temperature gradient. Um, so now what I'll show you is, um, so this is at the surface. So now we want to look at the uh, jet streams. So I'll just bring up my uh, jet stream images here. And so now I'm looking um, at 250 uh, millibars of pressure. So um, the pink areas are faster wind speeds. Um, and this is over Antarctica. So you can see that the winds are really whipping around quickly and over Antarctica. And you're seeing things like, uh, you know, cut off. This, this would be like a cut off here. So the jets are actually, they, they diverge, you know, it's one street, stream and then it diverges and then converges, um, combines back in. And you can see the waviness, but the, the, um, the extent of the waves, uh, the amplitude of these waves um, is, uh, is not enormous. I mean, there's a large temperature gradient, the Antarctic's very cold, you know, we've got the warmer areas around New Zealand and Australia, uh, large temperature gradient, so very, very strong winds, and uh, they're mostly zonal. There's not a lot of waviness, but there's a lot of things going on here. You can look at it in more detail. Um, this is uh, over the um, uh, this is over the Pacific now. Um, so you can see uh, kind of what's happening is, you know, you can see these. So we've got the this pool of warm water over here. So generally, what happens is when the trade winds weaken, then this water can slosh over this way. And we'll look at sea surface temperature and see why that's happening um, in a bit. But the, you can tell that the, uh, because we're in the northern hemisphere winter, you know, the, the amplitude of these waves can be much uh, larger um, in the northern hemisphere. So we're seeing lots of waviness. And uh, you can see that's pretty clear here. Um, with, this is over the uh, looking down on the Arctic, so Greenland is here, um, so Canada, northern Canada is over here, Asia over here. Um, so you can see what's happening with these these jet streams. So um, so so the uh, the jets are are uh, they're becoming they're they're quite wavy. You know you're getting like you're getting. Um, convergence here of, of two jets and then you're getting them breaking up you know and so where you get these uh, where you get these uh, ridges you get warm air coming up and where you get the troughs you get cold air coming down from the Arctic so there's a lot of mixing um, pattern mixing of the patterns going on 
and you can see the upper level winds um, are having a big influence on the surface winds because we saw um, that over the between Greenland and Svalbard there was a lot of export um, so we can see these upper level winds coming this way from the jets um, and but there's lots of structure here there's lots of structure um, as the because the temperature gradient is uh, decreasing um, because the Arctic's warming, the sea ice is going, we're in the northern uh, boreal summer, um, so the temperature gradient is less um, between the uh, our North Pole and the equator. So we're getting a lot of meridional um, structure. And this is what's happening over, an, you know, another view. Um, you can see, um, so South America, Africa, North America, um, you know, you can see these patterns here setting up. So it'll be very warm in this area, very cold in this area. Um, and, uh, you know, you can see these strong uh, winds coming across over to Europe and different uh, patterns and so on, um, different swirls. Um, so there's a lot of streakiness, if you like, in those images. Now, I want to go back and now show you uh, a little bit on the... Um, ocean current so let me find my mouse and uh, okay so we've got this guy um, let me move this out of the way I'm missing something here um, move this out of the way there we go so these are the um, ocean currents here um, so you can see the um, the Gulf Stream coming across and breaking up here um, you can see, you know, a current coming this way, but it's very broken, broken up because the winds are very low over the uh, equator here. Um, but this is a key thing that I want to show you um, because this is the um, this is a temperature anomaly. Um, okay, so red is much warmer than normal, and uh, blue is um, uh, blue is we've got cold regions and the yellows are very warm so the water is very warm off here so you can't have a jet coming straight across this is a blocking area so we're not getting the uh, this is why California is in is in the drought I mean we're just not getting moisture laden um, air coming across and this is the equator um, so where it's it's just, it's warmer than normal across here um, this is a sign there's a, the very warm water pool and it's because as the winds trades pushing the decrease in strength and the water sloshes off and uh, we get the this is how the El Nino develops now I just want to show you um, what the uh, currents are so this is uh, this is water temperature uh, anomaly so we've got the Arctic Basin um, which is covered in ice so it's uh, there's no anomaly there but the water is extremely warm here you know extremely warm here and it's pushing right in uh, so the Arctic is surrounded um, by the uh, by the warm regions and if we go to the uh, other pole which is Antarctica in winter um, you can see um, the uh, that the the ice is coming out here um, and and uh, so the water is cooler here and then the oceans all around are uh, warmer warmer than normal so um, so I'll uh, I'll finish up here and uh, uh, so that's basically so basically we've got an El Nino uh, coming on strong and we can follow it as it develops so thank you